Hi, Dominic. Hi there. I feel like some truth telling is about to happen here. I'm just going <laughs> to let people into our secret. Are you okay with that? <laughs> yeah, let's let them in. Yes, absolutely. So a theme for our conversation seems to be we hop onto Zoom, we start to just talk casually, and then we get into stuff that would be great to share. So we've already started without you, people who are <laughs> So we didn't mean to, to. Yeah, we, we didn't, didn't mean, mean to start without you, but, yeah. but we just can't help it. So we've hit record. We don't have an introduction other than welcome to the next half of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll try and invite you into what we've already talked about so that everyone's included. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we had an idea, Dominic, for this conversation initially to be around like loving what is essentially that's what we had on our agenda an idea to talk about. And what we've already started to dive into was a conversation around like where where wisdom shows itself and um, and how subtle it can be. Mm. You yeah, know? What, yeah. And and so I, I'll bring I'll bring people up to speed with what we've talked about so far. And and we started out by I was really just acknowledging you. I asked how your day was. We started to talk about these conversations that you were in with multiple different people, and the level of engagement that you were seeing as a result of sharing them. And one of the things that I said, I really noticed was um you're engaged like mm. I really got a sense of when I'm looking at the sharing of the conversation and and people's questions and inquiries and reflections you're in there in that conversation with people in the group engaged and it doesn't feel like that's hard work it feels like that's inspired action, which is exactly what we were talking about in our previous conversation. Mm. So you are living what you are sharing. And it looks to me like there's a misunderstanding. And I certainly had this misunderstanding. I'm not excluding myself from this at all. Of when I hear effortless creation, when I hear the universe will provide, I just have to get into that vibration. I also hear, well, I can sit on my ass and, you know, I'm things are going to just come. And that's really not what I'm seeing in you. It's there's no sitting on my ass and expecting things to come because I'm Dominic. And do you not know how much I do to get into this vibration universe? It's like you're following the pull of this is fun for me. This is inspired for me. There's something here. This is this is like making a difference. I love being in this space with people in this way. So there's work involved. There's mm. work. There's, there's certainly fun involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's certainly a lot of fun involved for sure. Mm, yeah. And it feels like that's, that's an important distinction to slow down on because, again, it's something I would have um, resisted. So imagine there's other people resisting. Yeah. And it's the definition of work. You know, so if we associate work with hard work, going against what we want to be doing, having to put a lot of energy into something, that can be work. But yeah. what what you're describing as fun, I actually do sometimes describe as work because my definition of work now can be so fluid. There's definitely work that's like, no. And then there's fun. And it might be fun. To, it might be fun to play with switching out the word work for fun. Mm. Yeah. And just seeing what does that do? Let's run that experiment for a week. For a week and test it out. Yeah. Lisa, what are you up to this week? Well, I've got work. Well, I've got fun. <laughs> I wonder what would happen, right? Like, am I open to what I'm hearing right now in this moment versus my ego, I'm sorry, Dominic, work and fun are the same thing because I see it like this. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because uh, if you, if we, if we notice kids, right, what is like, let's think about that. What is the occupation of children? What is the work of children? And the work of children coming into this world <laughs> is to play and have fun. And, um, and when we look at, and like, literally, they wake up in the morning, and they go to work right away. <laughs> From yeah. the, and, and the house, usually when you have young children, like when we did, the house is set up with all their work tools. It's got like, that's overrun with their work tools, right? Yeah. Like they've got they them doing overtime either. And that's the thing. See, that's why I'm, I'm bringing that up because they go to work and they don't stop and you have to stop them at some point. And then you've got to say to them, no, it's time for lunch. You need to stop working. We got to come in and we need to have lunch. And then they go back out to work and then they work late and you got to stop them. Okay, guys, it's bedtime, but now it's time to stop work. We got to get to bed, right? And they don't want to. They don't want to stop work. So mm -hmm. that's the thing when we look at children and we look at their occupation and we look at what they do in coming into the world, right? Mm -hmm. There's something important about this too, because what, who, who are the human beings that are experiencing the most growth and expansion relatively mm. in the world of form. We're all equal spiritually. We're all here with the same possibility and potential. But, but engaging in the world of form and becoming skilled and masterful in the world of form I mean, all of us continue to do it, but relatively speaking, which human beings are going from this level to this level to this level to this level in terms of more skilled, more competent, more talented, more, more ability to do, right? You yes. take these kids and how are they doing it? Well, they do it by going to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they do it by play and there is something about play and learning and expansion that is this indivisible engage and expand and engage and expand and ex engage and expand mm. it's interesting to see them yes and so what would you say dominic to um because this feels relatively accessible for me as a, a business owner so there's there's almost there's a lot of stuff that I get to control right there's a lot of yeah. stuff that would be within my power to influence to control because it's my business and so it's I think it's relatively easy if I allow it to be to make changes in my life in my business that invites in more fun more play less hard work now, when you have a team, when you're working with other human beings, when you have a boss, when you work in an organization with structures and policies and unions and, you know, whatever that setup is, it might look a little more challenging because there's less influence over the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So how would you respond to anyone that has that thought of, well, I can see how that would be easy in this environment, but it's a little different for me. Yeah. Well, and what your point, when you point to uh, that, what you're pointing to are circumstances, formed conditions is really it. Um, now, we know that 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 my way of being cannot, well, and is not coming as a result of conditions and circumstances 
that are out there. Um, I can get myself to a place where my way of being is coming from these conditions. I can get myself there. I can talk myself into it. I can talk myself into it so well over time. I can think about it in, with such consistency over time that I will reliably show up and my state of being will come from the conditions. Um, we got, oh, there's... Um, those weekly meetings are so tough. They're really tough. Everyone in there is always challenging you. Um, I never am heard. No one is listening. Every time I'm speaking, uh, and then it, whenever I present a good idea, I get nothing but challenges, right? Um, and you expect me, number one, you expect me to think that that is fun. And then number two, you expect that I'm supposed to show up there at my best, but the company sucks. The whole culture here sucks. And my boss is at fault because he's the one who lets these meetings be that way, mm -hmm. right? So I can I can talk myself You're into very showing convincing, up. Dominic, because well, I have to say, it's like, <laughs> I'm very convinced by you. You're good at getting into that. We, you know, and here's the thing, Lisa, that's about that is the most convincing that I am is to myself. Mm -hmm. So do you see you were convinced, but that is a real convincing of myself above all. And once I'm convinced, everyone will be convinced. See, this is the other reason why coaches can be useful. I'm not trying to sell coaches, but um. You heard me speak there for a few minutes, and you said you were convinced. Um, this is what friends are for, mm -hmm. because that's why I, that's why we're friends. It's like, and in life, if you look around and you look at your friends, part of the reason you keep them around is that they are in agreement. Do you know how annoying it would be? If I had told you that story and then you challenged it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if you said something about that is, you know, if even if you asked me the question of, is it really my boss? Is it really the company? Is it like that? You know, that might be nice for a little bit, but you better not keep doing that because if you keep doing that, that starts to get uncomfortable over here. And yeah. I, uh, you know, that's not what my friends do. Yeah. I want to blame the meeting. I want to blame the boss. I want to be clear of any responsibility here and come on this path with me and understand that it's all out there that is creating my experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the way that I am is the way anybody would be. I mean, yeah. cut me some slack. Who yeah. do you know could be different in that kind of a situation? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm perfectly normal, right? And so this is, you know, this is one of the things around, you know, why do people bother with coaches or whatever is because part of the training in coaching is that you can't be in it with them because mm -hmm. you're not helping. They have friends who are in it with them. That's that's not your job. Your yeah. job is not to go in it with them. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the the you know this this is the value of you know some kinds of conversations, um, which often are in those kinds of coaching conversations. And and um, yeah, so it's <laughs> yeah. just an aside. So, but. so when you were saying like I can get myself into that place, I can absolutely get myself into that place. That's not a um, goal here by the way if anyone's yeah. listening when we say I can it's I usually interpret that as like oh it's possible I could do that as a, like a good thing and what we're offering here is I can it's doable just observe just notice watch where you start to do this because this is our mind would like would, likes to take us this way because it seems like the easiest exit point 
Easy is a good word. Mm. Easy is a good word. It is easy. It is effortless. You didn't see me work at it, did you? I did not. Very easy. Very easy for me to do that. Very easy to do that. To bring myself into the state of that my being is now determined by my circumstances. Mm. And it's effortless. I can have a state of being determined by my circumstance. Only trouble is that I don't like any bit of it. But that's beside the point. I'm just talking about the creation of it. It doesn't matter that I don't like it, but look at how effortless it is to actually create myself into a state that is not what I prefer or desire. It's easy. It's easy and effortless. And so there's something curious about that because if it's that easy to create that state, if it's that easy to find myself in that state of being, then so is any other. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that then? Because it can feel like that might not be accurate. You know, like it can feel like it's easier to go that path. And when I want to, um, I want to, with the same level of grace and ease, invite myself into, let's say, ownership, responsibility, looking within instead of out here that can feel more confronting. So talk to me a little bit, Dominic, about what you see about um, the ease, like the possibility of that being easy. And, and I'm aware you've already started talking about that and what you just said, but sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. it could be beneficial for people. And then also um, what makes it, feel difficult because that can be an experience of like it doesn't feel easy that feels more energetic to get into that space yeah there and and that's that word was really good energetic because it's all energetic right it's all energetic and as you start one way or another there is an energy and, and that's what makes it easy. So um, as you start one way or another, there's an energy or a vibration which activates within you, either toward, toward who I really am, empowerment, clarity, joy, either that way or one of... Um, um, pessimism, hopelessness, worry, uh, it, uh, frustration, um, sort of not getting right, a different kind of feeling. So an energy begins. And the reason it's effortless is because once started law of attraction, law of attraction is always working. It's always going on. And that law simply expands all vibration. It continues to expand all energy. So which direction? It's effortless from there. It's Mm -hmm. effortless from there. Start in a direction and it's effortless. It will take you this way. Start in a direction the other way. And just as effortlessly, it will take you the other way. So... That's why there's not a difference in it. That's why it's like there is an ease to it. And it will happen either way because it's not really your energy required. Mm -hmm. It's not really so much your energy required. There's a law that expands that vibration and you're caught up in it is all that happens. Yeah. You're caught in it. Can I play with that for a little bit, Dominic? Um, I'm just tuning into like my week even and just feeling into like, where has it felt ease and where has it felt grace and where has it felt resistance? And so I can see how, like we started off this conversation with, you have a, a inspired energy move through you to be in your group and to be engaging in these conversations. And it feels like this is, something I love right and so um 
that feels like, oh, I've, I've gone into this direction, I've gone here, and that's effortless. And then it can feel like, you know, my ego might be telling me something else. And so the, so I'm trying to love that, but my ego is resistant to that. So it's where my ego and my mind has a different idea of what I should be doing or what I want to be doing. Then it doesn't feel like I can access that ease anymore. So oh. yeah, you go. What do you got for us? <laughs> well, well, you're, you're, um, you pointed to something happens which interferes so in the absence of anything, law of attraction would take an energy. In the absence of anything, you are buoyant, which would be like a be which would be like a beach ball held underneath the surface of the water. Your true nature is one of high vibration. Your true nature is one of harmony with your source. That's your true nature. But if you take that um, and hold it underneath with effort because it'll take an effort to pull it under um then you're no longer buoyant you are now further from your your true nature your source your true wisdom your intelligence which is at the higher vibration where thoughts are flowing that are more intelligent so you take that and pull it with effort pull it under the pulling it under is not so much pulling it under as, as a more accurate description of it would be is weigh it down. Mm -hmm. That's a more accurate description because you're buoyant. But how do I weigh down a beach ball? You've got to pile something on it. You have to put weight on top. The only thing you can put on is the weight of thought. You have to pile the weight of thought on it like you know i think i'm running out of time and getting this done right? like an urgency suddenly pile that one on top and you start to lower it right now law of attraction takes the vibration where it is expands it yeah you are running out of time you should have started earlier it's a nice thought where that thought come from <laughs> Let's take that thought and now pile that one on. Do you know that's part of your trouble is you don't, you never start early enough with this stuff. Do you know that? <laughs> Let's put that one on top. Like, are you even committed to this? Like, are you even committed? Are you actually committed to anything in your life? Let's just keep putting some thoughts on this, yeah. right? And here you are in the middle of working on something. Look, look, look at the thinking. What's your output here? What's your quality of product on this thing you're working on now that you're surrounded by this kind of thinking? Who's working? And by the way, are you having fun? You're having some fun right now? <laughs> so, so, oh my gosh, it does not look like fun at all. But what we fail to see is, doesn't look like fun. I did it to myself. Well, not ready to admit that because I don't want to, there's no way I would do this to myself. There's absolutely no way I would do that. I'm not dumb. There's no way I would do this to myself. No, I'm not blaming you. No, I'm not blaming you for doing it to, your, to yourself. You, you want to notice you did it to yourself. <laughs> There's not a blame. It's a noticing. It's a wake up and notice because there's no way for a buoyant beach ball to go underneath the surface unless you weigh it down. And only you can do it because the only thing that can weigh it down is your own thought. Yeah, I think that's important, Dominic, to just help people really hear, hear that about the no blame piece. Yeah. Because that can be a barrier to somebody owning it. And right. it's owning of it that the, the freedom's on the other side of that. Like that can be such an empowering thing to see. Gosh, I'm doing this. Like I'm doing this. That means that I could get out of the way 
and the ball will go back to the surface. And it's so empowering to see that. But when we add the judgment and the blame of like, why yes. am I doing this? I shouldn't be doing this. This is my fault somehow. Oh my God, I'm such an idiot. How come everyone else gets out of their way and I can't get out of my way? Then we've just added more thought and the ball's more going thought, back. more thought. So well, I think it's really and sorry to see that. And, and, and sorry to say that law of attraction helps you with that. Mm. Yeah, so it will give that. Because it, because see, you add more thought and more thought, and law of attraction brings you more thought and brings you more thought, and the momentum in the direction you're going increases. It's impersonal. Mm. That law is not about you. That law is about vibration. So when you're in that vibration, so that's See, so again, you could almost say is like, well, what are you blaming yourself for? It's not like you thought up the next thought, is it? You didn't sit here and think up the next thought, did you? Like you didn't sit here and say like, oh, I'm totally unreliable. Like as if that was a creative thought, like the first time you've ever thought that creative thought, right? No, that thought showed up next. That shot thought showed up next. And then the, by the way, the, and you, you, you don't know what you're doing. You've been faking this whole thing. Showed up next. Did you creatively think up this thought? It's on the same vibration. Mm -hmm. It's coming at you, right? It's just coming at you. So, yeah, yeah that's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, it's so powerful. Um it's so powerful to see that because, you know, I, I, I don't, I haven't been in law of attraction conversations a lot. So there's, there's no truth be the capital T to what I'm about to say, but it seems to me that the conversations I have been listening to are all are the questions that come from people are all around. Like, how do I get into a higher vibration? And it's like what we want to manifest. And it looks like, you know, more wealth or a relationship or health or whatever it is, looks like we're, we're gunning for something better. And so we identify, ooh, there's a way to do that using the law of attraction. But I don't know how often I've really heard the law of attraction, like specifically being like the law of attraction is giving you always what, you, what you're asking for. What, and what, like, what you are in harmony with what you're in harmony with what you're in harmony with yeah and that can take the ball down and just it take it down and take it up yes so i've heard It'll... it say what we focus on grows right i've yes. heard it quite like that yeah. but I, I don't know if i've heard it defined in this way of like the law of attraction is giving you this as well sydney banks said it when he said that you, uh, because in, a, in other words, vibrations or frequencies, people want to get the high vibration. That's a high frequency, right? Mm -hmm. Versus a low vibration, which is low frequency. Sydney Banks described these frequencies, which are, I mean, he's, it's a formless energy. But how did he talk? Well, he was saying consciousness. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is what it is. So what he said was level of consciousness. So mm -hmm. he used the term level of consciousness. And when he said level of consciousness is you have thinking in this level of consciousness. I'm describing this in different terms from a teaching that speaks about it as law of attraction. Rather, mm -hmm. Sidney Banks spoke about it as levels of consciousness, and he said that your thinking is at a certain level of consciousness. And so you can't really get out because the, the, only, the only available thinking you have becomes in the level of consciousness, which mm -hmm. is why it looks like you're not doing this. It's... Yeah. It seems like, and to some degree, so yeah, what there is to do is you want to understand this. Everyone, everyone who's the typical in the law of attraction and all that stuff 
is trying to use it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How, okay, just how do I use that so I could get to high frequency, high vibe? Because somebody told me that's where everything is. Everything I want is in high frequency, high vibe. Let's cut to the chase. How do I get to it, right? And it's sort of like, well, you don't even understand it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it's human It's human to want for that, right? It's human to want yeah. to have the answers to the how do I use it? Because what, how I'm listening to this is you're telling me this is the way to gold. So I'm going to be like, how do I do that? How do I use it? How yeah. I want the gold? So it's really... Um, it, it can be challenging for somebody's intellect, all of our intellect, not, this is not a hierarchy, right? It's not like somebody's yeah. intellect. It's like, it, it can be challenging for the intellect to take a, a listening, something that they've heard and, and, and apply it. If it's not, if it's an understanding, if it's a, you yeah. know, it, I can't, I can't rationalize it. I can't make it, it doesn't fit in this box that I want a step-by-step step to get to there. And so it can be really difficult to hear something in the, in there's a gap of like, there's a hearing and a using and I'm in here and you're not yes. given the answer and that's frustrating. <laughs> and, and, um, and, you know, because we're coaches, you know, unlike spiritual teachers and, you know, some, some other modality, we are coaches. So our conversation must make a difference with somebody being able to be more effective in their life and to be able to move in the direction of their desire. If if our conversation and our talking does not have some benefit in that way, you wouldn't be coaching very long. It's There's no return. There's nothing of value here. Um, so it has to connect. And and but but there's a reason that we're we're going in a in the direction of understanding rather than offering the tips and ideas and the reason that is is because from an understanding you'll have it forever in your life you wouldn't need anything from an understanding the doing would be apparent to you and it would be also custom to you. It would be very specific to you. Let's take the example we just said, right? Say you did understand that at a very high vibration, at that frequency when you're there, you have the most intelligent thinking. You are in the most flow. And you are most in line with everything you want. You are the best version of yourself. You could show up in a meeting in a particular way. You, you could uh, take on a new business and your intelligent level and, and ability to work with it would be very, very high. So let's say we understood that. So now we spoke about what is this? Well, if you understood yourself as buoyant in the metaphor being as a beach ball, Then what we're saying is, in the nature of the beach ball, is buoyancy at the highest level vibration. That's the nature of it. Mm -hmm. Then when we say, but but I'm not always there. How How do you explain that? And then we said, well, if you take a beach ball and weigh it down, of course it would be not there. And then you go, yeah, that makes sense to me. If I've weighed it down, then it would be down. And, and then we go, so what should I do if I'm ever weighed down, right? So they ask the coach, so what should I do if I'm ever weighed down? Now I know I'm not there and I'm not a match to my desire. What do I do? The coach could say, well, lots you could do. If you were to put on music and dance and do all this stuff and da, 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 da right? And then they go, you think that would work? Just, yeah, there's like studies done on this. You know, movement, physical movement, all this, right? Now you have, like, you have no idea, like you don't have any understanding of what's being explained to you, but you go try all this 
Now, I know the explanation. It's distracting. It, you dropped your thought. You couldn't keep holding on to it. And buoyancy happens. But that doesn't help you because now you're stuck with these practices. Mm. These, yeah. You got, have all these practices and you're stuck. You still don't have any understanding. And yeah. now you think that you've got to lift this beach ball every time it goes down. Yes. And if My you can't access the music player, then you're fucked. Well, you're screwed <laughs> because now what are you going to do? Because you've got a meeting in a few minutes and I don't see any music around anywhere. You're screwed. You've got to go into that meeting and you're not even high vibration. right? <laughs> like, so it's just, that's the reason. It's like, no, you, unless you understand you think there's value, but that value is nothing. And this is where it's all the grounding of the coach because the coach is innocent. Mm. The, from the coach's understanding, what are you talking about? I help my clients get what they want and I give them all kinds of tools and tips and tricks and practices and things that'll help them. That will, do, that will help them do what? It will help them to lift that beach ball up to the surface of the water. I go... That's idiotic <laughs> from my understanding. That's a, that's a total misunderstanding. Who would do that? Who would take a beach ball and lift it to the surface of the world? That's too much effort. That's nuts. Yeah. Every bit of effort that's required to take the beach ball and to lift it to the surface of the water is because you're misunderstanding something. You are taking your own physical effort to lift this thing up. Why would you do that? Yeah. It would be effortless. It would be effortless to drop thought. You're weighed down with thought to drop something. Have you ever taken a pen and dropped it? No effort to drop the pen. It will take effort to lift it up. No effort to drop a pen. It takes effort to hold it. Do you ever pick up a weight? All the effort is in holding it. If you let go, it drops. It's effortless to drop a weight, right? So here you are. If you would drop thought, drop thought, effortless, what happens is the vibration would raise. So why would I need a practice on how to raise my vibration? That's idiotic if well, I know who I am. One of, the, one of the things that helped me drop thought is the understanding. So there's, there's a, because um, I would hear this, right? And I, and I remember, gosh, the, most of the frustration, the most of my feeling was frustration when I started entering into the three principles arena and really trying to understand what the heck are people talking about here. And so I wanted to learn. There was a deep desire to learn. And I had like this insatiable thirst for, I want to know what people are saying. And one of the things that helped me was um when I would hear let go of thought let go of thought I was like my question was but how do you let go of thought right so again I'm looking for the how to to make it useful to make it practical but it, people kept and continued to keep pointing me back to an understanding of the nature of thought and that really did help knowing that thought is the nature of it is transient knowing that I'm not the one that created the thought in the first place, yeah. right? Knowing that I could um, be less attached to what the thought was trying to tell me. So the, the, it was like there was an illusion, uh, illusionary nature about it that when I believed it, I couldn't drop it. But when I could see more about the understanding of what is thought, it was more effortless. It was, it became effortless to let it go. And if I could say anything practical, it would be that. It's about to help me let go of thought, tune into that understanding 
more around the nature of it. Get curious about what you are currently believing thought is, story is, belief is. Because when you, one of my mentors um, shared with me a story about, he said, Lisa, imagine if you were going to a train station. He's like, imagine you going to work and every day you go to this train station, but there's this really angry man at the train station and he's shouting abuse at you and he's threatening to hit you. And so you're going, I don't want to go to that train station anymore. And you start behaving differently you start getting the bus to work or you start walking three extra miles to go to a different train station because you're petrified of the angry man and then he said one day you go to the train station and the angry man is there and you walk right through him and you're like whoa what and he's like can you realize he was a hologram all along he's like Amazing. that's the nature of thought and he said no more will you ever have to walk the additional three miles no more will you ever have to get that bus because you will see that what you were believing was made up in the first place and now how easy is it to just go and like grab the holograms bomb you know like or give them a tickle it's right. like there's nothing to be afraid of there anymore so you don't need to hold on I don't need to hold on to anything I was believing about he's going to hit me I'm in trouble it's just gone. And I didn't have to do anything about that other than understand what it was he and I was believing. Great metaphor. Yeah. So it's just great metaphor. Allow yourself to be really curious with thought, story, belief, and just notice, notice yeah. it notice into the understanding of it. Yeah. The metaphor is such an amazing example of a transformation of your behavior. Mm hmm. It's a complete transformation of your behavior with nothing changing. Yes. He's still there. He's still saying what he's saying. Your understanding has changed. Yes. And now that you understand what that is, that scary, threatening, all of that, from understanding what that is, hologram, like that it's your behavior is appropriate to your understanding mm -hmm. yes now here's the thing right that's what it is. and by the way and this behavior of yours is dramatically different than what it used to be except it's changed in an instant with no discipline or willpower it's the most natural thing in the world for you to just walk right on through and that kind of behavior change just happened in an instant. The only difference was understanding. Mm -hmm. Before understanding, there was so much behavior. There was thinking every day, which, which is going to be my best option today, given the time I need to get there. Do I walk the three miles to this place? Do I try to go around? Blah, 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 blah like that, then the behavior, and by the way, this is the, this is the part, your behavior was always a perfect match to your understanding. Mm -hmm. It's not like suddenly it's a match to your understanding. It was always a perfect match to your understanding. So given the guy is there and he's very threatening and stuff can happen, of course, given that understanding, so it's better to walk three miles. You do want to get where you're going, or it's better to. So the yeah. behavior is always matching the understanding. And then you get a coach and you say, coach, you got to help me. This is taking too long and whatever. And the coach says, of course, I can help you. We can get you working out so that you're able to run faster. And that whole three miles out of your way won't take you as long as it's taking you now. Right. So you'll be able to get to the other train station a lot faster. By the way, there's other things I can give you tool. I can also give you because there are tools that can be used in exactly your situation. I've worked with people in your situation. For instance, a bike in a bike that three miles to the other train station is going to just shave off all kinds of time. Imagine what you can do with the time you save. Right. And this is traditional coaching. Right. It will take that help you, given your level of understanding. Right now, by the way, when you talk to a client like that, 
and you say, that's why our coaching is a bit different because the client comes, says, I need some help with this. It's taking me too long to get to where I'm going. And, you know, these are my circumstances in life and all of that. And we say, well, what I can help you with is we're going to deepen your level of understanding. Like, I don't want what that. are <laughs> you talking about? Yeah. Well, how is this? Did you not hear what I said? I have problems. <laughs> yeah. What I need is a coach to speed this up, to get me where I'm going faster. Like, what are you talking about? Do people actually hire you? <laughs> like, how is this going to help? Yeah. Well, we what we do is we work on your understanding. And it's like, oh, okay, I, you know, really, I don't think you're for me. I'm going to, there are like coaches who actually understand what I'm saying. And I'm going to go like talk to them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's, it's really different. It's a very, it's, it's so different to how we are programmed to believe how to get from A to B and what we need and how we listen, you know, it's like, it's something else. And it's so beautiful and precious and valuable to be able to be with someone in a way that radically transforms things for them. And you, sometimes you do have to be with someone in a way that invites them into understanding the understanding, yeah. right? As a coach, because otherwise you are just going to miss each other. It's like, I, I'm over here and I can see the possibility, but it's not being received because yeah. there's like, my like you said once I remember in a conversation we're always in integrity with our with something right and that's we've kind of just touched on that as well our behaviors are in alignment with our beliefs yes always in alignment yeah so it's it's a kind of a big ask for someone that's you know in this alignment to to say like come on over here and see what I see and it can be right. a big it can be a big jump for someone. So, you know, sometimes there is a, you go find a way of being with someone that invites them into the possibility of what you're sharing without any expectation of them getting it. So I think, gosh, I've been in this conversation for six years and I, I certainly didn't get it, like get it, get it. And I probably this time next year will be like, oh, you know, I didn't really get that. There's more I've seen around that now. Who knows? Oh, there's so, and yeah. There's so much deeper and deeper and deeper. It's it's, it's so kind of like at the first part of the conversation, you realize that the, the, the guy at the train station is a hologram, right? So that's kind of cool because now you can walk through them, right? But there's always deeper and deeper and deeper. The hologram came from you. Yes, huh? yes, yes. Like, see, there's deeper. It's like, Okay, at the first level, it's a hologram. I understand the nature of thought and I can walk through it. At a deeper level of understanding is, no, you don't understand. Other people walking to the train station don't actually see that. Mm -hmm. What they get is this beautiful woman who's inviting them in and giving them like cupcakes on the way through. So they get an entirely different hologram. That mm -hmm. hologram is yours and it comes from you. It is like a past okay. pattern. And, and okay. that's like, oh my God, that's like a deeper understanding, right? So, and it just goes on forever. Yeah, that was beautiful, Dominic. I love it. And you read my mind earlier on in the conversation. I was, what was going on in here was like um, making it, making it real like in a context for, for someone so if you're thinking gosh how does this understanding really matter like why would it make a difference and it just can't not make a difference yeah. you know and and recently I was at Byron Katie school and one of the things that I really saw from observing who she was was there were people standing up and sharing about all kinds of things but they were sharing about the morning walk or something that she does and we were in LA near the airport and so the morning walk was kind of dreary it was like lots of just gray buildings it was raining it was you know loads of cars it wasn't out in nature and so a lot of people had this you know the morning walk is is a bit rubbish or, you know they had a lot to say in the negative about the morning walk and I was just watching Katie just be with that 
And there wasn't any resistance, any pushback. There was just love for like, I'm so glad you're in your school. You know, and her understanding of thought, of the nature of the human design, that allows her to be in her peacefulness, in her grace. Like she's interacting differently with that person because she understands who she is, I imagine. Right. And so, yeah. Like, how might that affect your relationships? How might yeah. that affect how you show up at work and your team meetings? It's so powerful. It makes such a difference because we're different from the understanding. Everything yeah. we touch then appears differently to us. And then our behavior will be different as a result of that. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that part and the, and it's so funny because, and the behavior change, the doing part of it is the easiest thing that requires almost no time spent discussing because that you can see the massive action change in the client that we described with the train station. Dramatic, incredible change in the doing, which has them be so much more effective, more efficient, shorter walk, faster mm -hmm. movement to the correct trains, like these are results coaches could only dream of seeing in their client. And all of that happening so quickly without this obsessive focus about the action and the behavior. And you could never get there anyway. This, this is the reason like I'm, I'm now I can really see like this is where we get to this hard work and effort. So the hard work part is always you working against your understanding and what you're seeing. So in other words, um, if if that was you going to the train station with the scary guy and then the, what the effort required for you to be um faster, more efficient, shorter distance. It would take um, an effort and an action from you that would be draining mm. because what you would have to do is act against. You walk, you see that, and you would need to now in seeing it is act against it. Mm -hmm. So you would have to try to act against it. Well, that takes a lot of energy. Because what you see is this. And so for you to keep moving would require a lot of um, acting against your understanding. And so that's why a lot of coaching then speaks to um, uh, you need commitment, you need willpower, you need discipline. Lisa, we're going to get you in shape. From now on, you're just going to walk straight through. From now on, you're going to take that. We're going to build you up. You're going to need to be disciplined about this and you've got to be committed. If you're not committed, then you won't do this, right? So the whole thing tries to get you to act against your understanding when in an instant we could have handled all the behavior change just from a, yeah. from a deeper understanding. Yeah, be committed to... Um deepening your understanding yeah yeah <clears throat> the good news is that that's where all of your support and wisdom is it's coming from a broader perspective giving you deeper understanding of what's actually going on and guiding you to more truth of it more truth in it see because your inner being wasn't fooled by that your inner being's not fooled by that illusion your inner being's not fooled by something that was simply put there as an illusion coming from you like it, it because because there's nothing there but out of some childhood memory of you really need to be concerned with 
you got to be careful where you're going. You got to watch your surroundings and all kinds of thoughts that were around, which are now very familiar thoughts. They're very familiar thoughts. And so, and there's, they're there with you. And as opposed to following where your guidance and wisdom is saying, hey, here's where we go. You're trying to get to some place. You just go through there and that's the train and that train will take you and whatever. And you're just following the guidance. And then the thought of, but this is a strange place and you don't know who's here and you need to be on the lookout all the time, like in order to stay safe. And that thought, which is an old thought that's been around forever comes and it's interesting to you. This is the thing. The thought would just keep floating. All these thoughts are all around. There's lots of thinking everywhere, right? It's all these thoughts. But that thought comes into your head and it could be the music they're playing and it could be the smell in the station. It could be something, but that thought is associated and suddenly it pops up. And now all of a sudden that wisdom that's flowing, that wisdom that's flowing, the light that comes through you, guiding toward all that you want, right? now takes a thought and puts it up in front of it. Because you have to do that. You have to take the thought that's floating around, grab it, because it keeps floating. You have to grab it and hold it. And when you do that, this light that flows through you will flow through that thought. And as it blows through that thought, a hologram appears before you of the reality of what you're thinking. And that hologram appears before you with evidence for this thought. And you're like, it, you created the whole thing. It's created yeah. in your thinking. The more, you, the more you hold that thought, the less you see the hologram and instead you see a real angry man yeah in before you understand the nature of the of the thought flow of what's going on here the less the man looks real and the more you see the hologram this, see this is the thing that david bohm that david bohm quote they often say where they say thought creates your reality and then says i didn't do it mm -hmm. right so <laughs> you're just like following you're just following your wisdom. You're just like going along. You're inspired to move all of that. And then the thought comes, are you safe? Is this, is this the place for you to be? So, but the thought you kind of like, it was about to go by, but you wait a minute, not so hasty. I need to take a better look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of thoughts. There's the smell the roses and look at the pretty dress on that person. And <laughs> Lots of stuff going on, but you kind of go, wait, what did that one just say? Mm. That one just said, you know, can't, can't trust blah, 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 or you're, you're too trusting anyway, or I don't know what the hell it said, but it's like, let me grab that one. That one, yeah. that one was interesting. Let me like take a better look at it. And there you go. And then the light within you is it's now. It brings its buddies, all the other thoughts. It, it's oh, like sure. Oh, sure. And the minute the light goes through it, this is the thing is the minute the light goes through it, casting the, the hologram, the shadow, where does your attention go now? Mm. Goes right to the guy standing right over there. See, this is what David Bohm said. So thought creates your reality and then goes, Look at that guy standing over there. Holy shit. And then, and then if you tried to look at thought, it would go, well, it wasn't me. Yeah. What are you looking at me for? Go look at that guy. That guy's a threat, right? <laughs> and, and then it's too late because now there's a manifested reality and that's yeah. now got your attention. And there's also an accompanying feeling. Yes, with it. And that, also adds to the to the gripping of the that guy is real luck and I'm I'm gonna prove it to you. Yes. And yes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's by the way, see that you said that very well. There's like an accompanying feeling because you cannot think anything without feeling it. So you were walking along without a lot of interference. The light was flowing through you, kind of moving you toward what you desire. So the feeling was great. You could say you were barely there. You were barely there you're just living life in flow like you knew to go left and right and go around here and there it's just like in flow and you were just like noticing so much beauty and 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 such a great time to be alive just very flow and so so you feel your feel your thinking so we that one came was interesting grabbed it and you feel it right away. So that's the thing. And this is why, well, what's your level of sensitivity? What's Mm -hmm. your level of sensitivity? Did you just notice that? Notice what? Well, (laughs) did you notice? You were like, notice what? What do you mean Mm -hmm. notice? I noticed the guy standing there. What are you talking about? Right? So you didn't notice the feeling like you didn't notice something just happened and it can't happen you can't go from a feeling to a lower feeling without that weight of thought you're like i don't know it's not that i went from a feeling that was great to a lower feeling because there's a guy standing there mm-hmm. What what do you what's thought got to do with this? I was fine. Look, I know this. It's my experience. Don't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm here. I was fine. Then there's a guy standing there and I got scared. How, how is that not what's going on? <laughs> yeah. It's like boarding the train in London and getting off in Scotland and not realizing that you went through the Lake District. It's right. It's like, no, I was in London and then I appeared in Scotland. It's like, yeah, but you traveled through the Lake District. No, no. No. <laughs> no, no. You were asleep. I know. I was in London and then I walked and then I was in Scotland. And no, no, none of that happened. And it's like, take another look. That's all we ask. Take another look. Get curious. Yeah. Take another look. Mm. Yeah. Dominic, I can't believe how quick our time always goes um, together. Is there anything more that you want to say on this topic whilst I have you? Or does that feel complete for you today? Um, w- maybe a repetition of what we said is that uh, in, other, in other talks that we've had is you're never lost entirely in this illusion. You're never lost, right? Because the feeling is always telling you something. So the feeling of that innate guidance and wisdom, the soul of you, that sort of truth of you, it's always flowing. Because were it not for that light, which is blocked, there could be no guy standing there that's scary as hell. The, the extent of his scariness is, is the strength of the thought blocking the light. In other words, it gets scarier the stronger that thought is almost impenetrable, right? So this is the salute. This, this is like the direction of where am I trying to go is I'm trying to go to better feeling. I'm trying to go to better feeling because better feeling is more truthful. Better feeling is more real and truthful and more um, guiding me, showing me a world where I can act in a way that is of my best interest. Because you would see, you would see a world where you could walk through and get on the train 
And mm-hmm. so that is in your best interest. That is most aligned to your desire. That'll get you where you're trying to go faster than anything. And, and when you don't see that world and you see a different world that's harder or longer or opposed to you, that you have to know ultimately in this understanding. You've got to know that that's you doing something. That's yeah. not really there. That's you doing something. And it's a scary monster. But your own thought, your own thinking is at the source of every scary monster. Right? Yeah. Once, once you get that, you start to get the nature of the scary monsters. They become less interesting. And what becomes more interesting is the light. Right? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And I want to just add this to just be really clear for people about when we talk about a better feeling, what we're not talking about is the better feeling that we're in when our friends agree with us. <laughs> scary man, right? Because that can, there's two feelings. It seems like we experience the smugness, the like reassurance, the, it feels good to my ego to be right about this that's not the better feeling that we're talking about right right yeah yeah that 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 can be a whole other conversation too because i love how at the end of the conversations we create we automatically our next topic <laughs> we tend to get into it but yeah that that's a very great point the better feeling starts moving directionally but it's not It's not the end because there's a difference between going from I'm 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 in despair with no reason to live to I'm in rage and and vengeful. See, that bothers people that to say that's a better feeling rage and vengefulness is a better feeling than suicidal Mm. because it will make me live Mm. the other one will not so it's moving in the right direction actually except if you don't understand this and you stay stalled there it doesn't serve you because it has incredible resistance in it and so it's a misunderstanding the feeling will nudge you back in that direction. But as you're moving through, do not stop. Do There's more to let go of, more to let go of, more to let go of until, yeah. So, yeah, yeah very you. good. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Thank you again. Another amazing conversation. And I will, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>